everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. For a short period of time, the Nikkei Stock Exchange did have Nidhi Sandy stock, any color stock, at 2434. That can be shown here. It was at a specific point in time, of course. It is uh, around 12 or 1 o'clock their time. As number far, number far, uh, do the dance of joy. There we go. The dance of joy, they which turning for 34. You did it, Riku. I thought he would never see it again. Thank you. Help it to reach 2232, the honor of the, to honor the fairy. Uh, fulfill the prophecy. I saw it stuck at 2500 area for a few days. Nice to see it starting to fall again. Congratulations. Any color for getting the achievement of making your stock price a joke. For referring to your company's nickname twice at minimum within the span of four months. Sell, sell, sell. Of course, all in Parachan's voice. It's all in that voice. But let's take a look at the actual stock price, which I always like taking a look at. Right now, it's at 2452. So it went up a little bit, but it started at uh, 2550. So it went down about 82 yen so far. And this is as of the closing of the stock market on the closing date. So, so far, they're not doing very well. That's expected of Nidhi Sandi's stock price, of course. The buyback was negligible. Time to buy back the stock again, Riku. Of course, if they buy back too often, then they get delisted from the stock exchange. That's just the way it happens because that's stock manipulation and they don't allow that. Uh, stock buyback was specifically made for this purpose to push up the stock, get it sold. Um, you know, people selling their stuff because it's like, hey, investors, we're letting you make money. We're, we're using up our extra money to let you make money. And then they use it, I believe, in, in taxes. They can use that as um, business expenses. So either way, they get that money back in one way or another, either by tax write-off or otherwise. But uh, still, uh, their stock is their bread and butter, and their stock is not doing so well. Here we have the bigger news when it comes to uh, Nidhi Sandhi stock. Any cutter treasury stock cancellation announcement in the treasury stock purchase status report as of July 10th. What is this? I This is here. The cancellation of treasury stock. Uh, there's what Article 178 of the Companies Act. Any color uh, referred to as the company announces that the board of directors meeting held on July 10th resolved to retire treasury stock in accordance with Article 178. The number of stocks being being canceled is 3.48 million. The percentage of total shares outstanding before cancellation is 5.45 percent, and the date of cancellation is going to be the 24th of. July. So after the cancellation, the total number of issued shares in the company will be 60 million. And the number of shares to be canceled above will be equivalent to all of the treasury shares held by the company as of July 3rd. So yeah, they're just going to be selling, like getting rid of some of them. Some people say it's like a manipulation tactic of making it more scarce, less volume, so that can manipulate the stock to actually be higher price. I don't know how that works. To be honest with you, I don't think that's how it works in the stock market. That would seem like an easy way for companies to manipulate their stocks. Uh, it seems like a weird loophole. But then again, a lot of these large companies do have loopholes that they take advantage of and that they will uh, see in a way that is um, is beneficial to them. Now, this is their other announcement of uh, type of stock, common stock, the acquisition status. This was their whole status of their buyback. Every single day, they bought about 264,000 to, and you know, some of them were 100 some thousand. These are all these numbers to 2 million buyback, uh, 4 million number of shares in total. And um, the total, as of June 30th, they only bought 2 million shares. But at the end of it, they did the full buyback. This was 7.5 billion uh, value of yen. This is all the, on June 19th, they spent a lot more yen than they, they normally did. And these are all the full 6.69 million as of June 30th. And then they finished it all off by the time that their buyback was finished, like around June 3rd or something, uh, July 3rd or something like that. So all of that stuff has been sold. <clears throat> Let's hear what people have to say. Can anyone who understands financing and stocks tell me what this means? From what I can tell, they're just creating more stock scarcity, causing the value of the stock to rise slightly, though this looks like in case of emergency, break glass type of maneuver. One of the Anon explained it like this. Imagine you have a cake for 20 people and now the owner of the cake says he doesn't want his share anymore. So that makes the remaining 19 people have a bigger slice of the cake. Something like that. Basically, Neji is retiring some of their stocks to make their investor share increase in its worth. So I don't know if it works that way. I'm not sure if it actually works that way. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to do stock scarcity. And so that's with the stock price. Of course, the number dropping below their IPO, the price that it first went public, is bad enough. And it drops low enough, they'll be delisted and their books investigated as part of the when can we allow you back on the stock market. 
check. Which, while it's by no means certain, even likely, it may uncover cooked books. They're also the matter of public face. It's bad luck for the company that stocks drop faster than a general market drop. So much less is happening with Nidhi Sanji that, you know, those things are going to happen. So they're trying their best to uh, artificially manipulate and artificially inflate their stuff, which is not good overall. July 9th and no kunai birthday stream. Why is this a problem? Because it is their birthday, according to the VTuber wiki here, 9th of July, and there doesn't seem to be any birthday stream so far. Of course, the day is new. The day is still fresh on my end, but no matter if they are on the other side of the world, it is already July 10th or very late July 9th, depending on where they are. It could be in the early July 9th. It could be in the late July 9th, depending on where they are. Doesn't surprise me. She doesn't tweet much or stream much nowadays, probably just writing out her contract. I think the contract one is unlikely since depending on the renewal date, we potentially would have already seen an announcement like Bonavere. Could also be her contract might be for more than one year, like the leaked contract people covered. Yeah, sometimes it's two years, sometimes it's one year, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. She did celebrate it with a tweet, at the very least. Remember to check the apostrophes. Oh yeah, the apostrophe gate. I remember apostrophe gate. Happy birthday to her, of course, and other people, <clears throat> Clara Charmwood, Ayamare, Roma, uh, people from Globy, Kohaku, Vance, uh, Ambrose, Victoria Brightshield, Yuki Wilson. Everybody's wishing her happy birthday. Don't care if they're Infinity Sanji or not. They're wishing her a happy birthday. And that is what matters. And uh, it says, not even merch. I feel like they generally forgot she exists if they can't even be bothered to drop the usual copy-pasted cheapo keychains. Key I mean, Nidhi Sanji is pretty much a merch company at this point. So it is kind of interesting that they would not drop merch for this. Like, they usually are, like, insane with dropping merch. But they do seem to forget that TTT and any of their new generations exist. And uh, unfortunately, not surprised, sometimes I see Vivi's tweets, but I never see Kunai or that third member I seem to forget. It's freaking Claude, of course. Don't forget Claude. Claude is amazing. They effing love Claude. Free Kunai, free Vivi. Jane, backshot, Nakasato. Holy crap. What the hell is that from? Not even a birthday voice included. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just, it's really weird that the merch company forgot to do this for one of their talents. Because in general, Nidhi Sanji, when they can make money, they do try to make money. This person is wondering if the algorithm is something's going on with it or, you know, something else happened. Because uh, it has way fewer people tweeting about Nidhi Sanji in English. It is primarily due to the way they're treating Nidhi Sanji English, in my opinion here. This person says uh, they search Twitter occasionally for different corpos and VTuber names. Over the past three months, it feels like even the number of tweets I see that are related to Nidhi Sanji, which are in English, have dropped off a cliff. It feels like 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 tweets are about Nidhi Sanji are in English, most are in JP. This some weird algorithm thing, have I somehow managed to get blocked by enough Nidhi fans that I'm walled away from Nidhi EN fan tweets? Or is it just an actual signal that there's less Nidhi Sanji EN fan activity on Twitter? It's basically less Nidhi Sanji EN fan activity. Honestly, it is. Most of the Western audience have abandoned Nidhi Sanji, so it makes sense there's less English discussion, which is very true. Uh, fewer fan art, fewer discussions, and anything else that involves a community has completely disappeared or has severely been reduced. Those are the consequences of what happened. You lose loyal fans and you lose engagement, which kills the algorithm. On top of that, the competition, Hollow v Shoujo Phase are doing some amazing things and have new talents, Justice uh, from EN. All those factors have squeezed Niji EN dry. They really have. It's just that's what it is primarily. It is that um, everything is going uh, to crap. In Nidhi Sanji EN, they're no longer supporting it. So people have moved on. People, although, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to stay with Nidhi Sanji, etc. In the end of the day, a lot of people do move on because there are so many other VTubers you can watch right now. And it does suck for the individual talents, which are the people that I'm worried about more. But uh, it's a side effect of being part of a bad company, unfortunately. I usually don't talk, talk about rants and stuff like that, but let's see if there's any good information here. Uh, if posting other people is harassment, then posting people's Reddit accounts, social media, you're harassing others. Weird to say that's only harassment if we do it. Exactly. Uh, people literally engage in harassment of different VTubers. One of them quite literally hoped the Dodgers would fail so that they could feel good. And another one on derogatory rant about Achan. The post was downvoted into heck about and back doesn't represent the sub and pretend like it does is insane. Claims are posting mocking uh, non-liver accounts. People rarely ever post that one bait person, and when people are posted, it's so we can talk about the point. If you publicly put out an opinion out there, it means it's open for criticism. Absolutely. I'm always open to criticism. I always say that because I am a public face right now. I am a public figure because they put my stuff out on the internet. So you guys are the ones starting this culture war because you can't acknowledge when Nidhi Sanji as a company messes up. 
It always claims that you do, and yet you've never held them accountable. Not once. In fact, the angriest posts I've seen are, the, are not the ones that were about the livers, but the ones about the company and how dare we speak poorly of it. And six, we are comparing companies because yes, Nidhi Sanji is going downhill. If you don't support the company, then why exactly are you mad about us showing the clear differences between healthy companies and them? It's all, of course, as this person mentions down here, they feel like they're the moral high ground. They talk down to CEOs of other VTuber groups because their CEO equals bad narrative. People here pick it up and then talk about it. They run in their echo chamber and cry about how we're harassing them. We're not harassing. We're just talking about it. You put it out there on Twitter publicly, uh, then you're going to talk about it. You try to block me and then you, you have it still public out there because someone else mentions it to me. I'm still going to talk about it because you're still putting it out there. I'm not ego searching you. When I talk about you, I'm not ego searching you. I'm looking at places like this, like Kurosanji, other people sending me stuff. And that's when I talk about you because it's public to them. So they put it public to me. Claim screen caps of harassment, yet post screen caps themselves all the time. Probably rationalize it by saying they justify harassment of cr or creating awareness uh, of harassers or something. Yeah, they're just doing all this crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Even harassed Doki at the time of her termination, which was vile. NYF Co., the place who doxed me as well. Uh, sisters posted the ableist and victim blaming Rentry document on their doc site. And sisters on Twitter promoted, spread, and defended it. Yeah, NYF Co., I'm very glad they're gone because they, they nuclear doxed me. That was really BS. Uh, and I don't even know why. I'm like a small VTuber. But I guess because I am on their radar. Like, I'm deeply on their radar because they really don't like me. Uh, they have nuclear doxed me. Luckily, that's all gone. But yeah, it sucks. A uh, fundamental difference between NDF and everyone else is that they're ultimately okay with any color attacking the reputation of their liver twice after she attempted. That's what NDF does. So I have no sympathy for them at this point. Unless there's actual harassment, unless there's actual like wishing of harm and things like that, that is when I'm like, hell no, don't do that. But if it's just regular criticism like what I do, I, I, don't, I don't have sympathy for you. On a little bit of a high, a better note, whatever you want to call it, Yago posted about his visit to the Anime Expo in LA. So this trip to LA was packed with events, including Anime Expo, a collaboration with Sujita, and a collaborative game with the Dodgers. We opened our LA office this week, so the LA office is open now. So we hope to continue to create events and collaborations that our US fans can enjoy. We'll also do our best in other regions. They already have the VP, the, the marketing people, everyone here in Los Angeles. It's already open. Uh, the Sujita one is uh, a store. It's an actual store where they basically are having their merch, the actual Hololive merch there uh, to put out. And he put this on his LinkedIn, of course, because he uses LinkedIn a lot. We're seeing his actual name listed there. Not going to lie, getting called the best girl on LinkedIn would probably be funny. A source was, of course, his LinkedIn profile is why Yago is best girl and an adored CEO. I am going to take a look at his profile on a different page because I want to make sure there's no identifying information. Nope, there isn't. It doesn't look like it at least so he said this is a trip to la this is a sujita thing everything he mentioned people are like glad the perception for these events and beyond expectations really shows large fan base there's north america congrats on a great show at ax new office in la for creating such amazing collaborations absolutely it's great for a a uh any kind of corporation to be able to do that he just snuck in the news that they've actually opened la office i don't recall that being announced it was mentioned somewhere either during the investor meetings or another article it was also mentioned when it was first announced that it was being reopened in July. Uh, and nice, I wasn't aware of the LA office opening and the Sujita collab. The Sujita collab is this one, I believe. Oh, it's an artisan noodle place. My bad. Sujita is actually an artisan noodle place. So it is a collab like they do with, you know, Nidhi Sanji does and other people do with an actual noodle place. They have the first week, which already passed, is Takanashi Kiara orange soda. And they had um, Gargura Chasu Sukimen. Yeah, Sukimen. Our signature pork chasu is served in a special cut to resemble Gargura's tail for the limited Sujita X Smith collaboration. So that's actually kind of cool. The next one that they're having, which is this week, is Ninomai Inanis Kikurage Mushroom Ramen, which is right here. Created to remind fans of Ninomai Inanis in the Kikurage Mushroom Ramen, features seasoned egg and negi surrounded by a bed of wood, uh, wood ear mushrooms. So this is nice. The next one that they have is the Watson Amelia Boba Milk. Yeah, Amelia's Boba Milk drink is a blend of Kinako black sugar, milk, and a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Ooh, nice. A sweet treat, just like Miss Watson. Then the next one that they're going to have at, on the third week, which is next week, on the 15th to the 21st, Mori Calliope Chocolate Fondant. This lava cake was inspired by Mori Calliope's striking character. Strawberry ice cream sits at the top of a chocolate fondant uh, cake with strawberries on the side. Gargura Chasutsukemen. Our signature uh, pork chasu is served on a special cut to resemble Gargura's tail for limited Tsuchika Myth 
collab. So they're doing the ROM in the case you missed it the first time. You can get it on uh, the 15th to the 21st. And this is, of course, Sujita, as we mentioned before, an artisan noodle place in, it looks like probably going to be in uh, Little Tokyo. Most of the places that have good good stuff is in Little Tokyo. And I think it's close. It's it's like closer to downtown LA. So it's probably going to be there. We have the Shoujo EN auditions that I've opened up now. As you know, I had covered the Shoujo JP auditions opening up. Uh, and the benefit that that would give, you know, people like Henya and others, because it would bring the Shoujo JP back into the limelight. Now we have EN auditions. There are a lot of people auditioning for EN. One thing, of course, they are looking for larger creators. Let's not kid ourselves. If a person like me or a person that has less than 50K subscribers on YouTube or Twitch goes for Vishojo, they're probably not going to be chosen because Vishojo is more low risk, high reward. That's what they want. That's what they tend to do. Don't blame them because as a company, that is the best thing you can do. Low risk, high reward is the best way to do things. Hopefully it's actual auditions. First thing I thought is what big indie they are picking up. Zen and Matara said they're open to VTubers of all sizes. Whether they take a small creator at the end of the day is a, is a different matter, however. Hopefully they've uh, learned from their previous mistakes and resolved to have a better auditioning system. Seeing how they are now, I'm fairly confident they have. Best of luck to all who audition. I think Vishojo is a great opportunity. Not having high hopes for non-friends, but it's it's expected. Uh, Froggy, Saiden, or Adi are heavenly, uh, and even heavenly, yeah, are, are the last two practically members already. All three of them are leaning towards maybe. As for Heavenly, he just shot it down and they want to be chill guys indie, which is understandable. I do understand that. Be shocked if ID doesn't join by the end of the year. Uh, I, be, I, I If ID doesn't join, I'd be surprised too. No matter who they pick, people will bitch about it. People will either say, oh, she collabed with multiple Shoujo members before, so that's why they did it. Another Shoujo friend joins. Oh, look, another big ex corpo. That type of thing. It's going to always happen. If you all remember, I mentioned before in a previous video about Parrot 4chan, the voice of 4chan at this point, who has mentioned on Twitter that uh, the Honkai Star Rail people did not pay him 2000 US dollars for a sponsorship that he did and he completed as requested because of some things that happened. A family guy, Chinese drawing meme, the being chilling Chinese meme, social credit meme, mentioning uh, the show uh, itself and more. They, they decided not to pay. Game Influencer refused to pay them 2k. They owe me for a fulfilled sponsorship deal. Don't go out of your way to harass any users that have their ads blurred here. Just wanted to hear the subreddit's input on this. So we have that situation and we have now people harassing others. And uh, I don't know, it seems like just the consequences of your own actions for thinking Sinophobia is peak comedy. It's not Sinophobia. And this person saying you're Ada, you're the, the, the bad Adolf uh, YouTuber whining about not getting paid because there are. What a pity. Cry me river. These are NDF, obviously. I would like to remind the audience that Doki Bird, a VTuber, is the troglodyte claims to like, is Chinese, lived in China, speaks Cantonese, celebrated Lunar New Year, and even sold merch. You're being R towards the girl you use in ammo. It's not being... There's parody, especially the stuff, the Bing Chilling thing, the the memes in regards to um, that are out there in regards to uh, South Park and other things like that, or or Family Guy. Those are all parody. They're meant as comedy. They're not meant to actually belittle a group of people. They're not meant to actually be R, R towards a group of people. They're not meant for anything like that. It's parody. It's comedy. It's meant to be funny. And the people who do it usually make fun of everyone else too, including every you know race under the sun they make like family guy makes fun of fun of every race under the sun so does south park so do all these other places that do parodies it's not fair to say that he's the one who's being who's being that way uh when racism has consequences uh you were are the chinese people and now you are mad that chinese people don't want to work with you incredible and that and that's that's not the case that's like i don't know i don't know i i hope i don't have rose tinted glasses you guys let me know down below if you think that it was uh you know in bad taste or whatever i am not beyond being corrected i'm not beyond uh criticisms so please let me know if that is something that you believe uh because i will respect that of course and i like having conversations like this i love having conversations in the comments uh, i think seems pair was contracted by mihoyo directly but by a german company game influencers or something it's the other company parrot mentioned in the tweet uh i suspect the case mihoyo having laid out the tos of the middleman but the middleman not doing due diligence in picking content creators to sponsor to be fair some of these things that Parrot showed were out of line for Hoyoverse, considering that Hoyoverse is still, in fact, a Chinese company. I can understand Hoyoverse not liking it, 
Um, but like the main criticism I had originally was put it in your TOS to not do anything uh, against China because of the fact they can actually be physically hurt in China. They can actually have their company um, like Hoyo uh, uh, can have their company uh, get taken away or have fines or have anything like that happen in China. So it is for their safety that they don't want that connected to them. I can understand that. But uh, here on the US side, that's less likely to happen, you know. And uh, to be fair, some of the things Parrot showed were out of line for Hoyoverse, considering that they're still in there. With that said, though, one, was still kind of scummy that he was denied pay, despite Hoyo's complaints being legitimate. And two, NDF will always find ways to blame Doki Bird for this, so don't think too hard on it. They pay Parrot, it would be seen as sponsoring hate message towards China. Wouldn't take long before they get S on. Not only that, like I said, the actual Chinese government would come after them. Tweet is who would blame Doki, says Doki live in China. Doki lives in Canada. Uh, the wrong information or what? I mean, I can agree with little, it's, it, it, it can be a little bit on that side, but even though he didn't make these R jokes, the sponsorship will still fill, fail because of Taiwan mentioned and calling out Niji for some reason not allowed. You know, it's just basically, they are at risk being a Chinese company, being hurt by China itself and the Chinese authorities themselves. So I can understand uh, the, the issue with the people who run Hong Kai Star Rail. Not wanting that. I can understand that side. Another bit of news that I did want to mention is you don't have to always, like I don't always have to do uh, Indie VTuber news. This is Face Connect. This is something that I watched yesterday for um, for Pippa, who was mentioning, she went for like a full three hours uh, answering questions, giving advice to v people who wanted to be VTubers, who people who wanted to increase their game as VTubers, people who want to do all this kind of stuff and how to do it at a low cost. You can start with just like a, like what I started with and I still kind of have, you know, cheapo, cheaper cameras, a, a laptop if you're just going to be doing just chatting or doing, you know, League of Legends, that type of thing. You can use a laptop. You can use a lot of different things. You can use, like she mentioned Canva. She mentioned CapCut. She mentioned a lot of different or things that you can do to make it be kind of easier for yourself as things go on. Uh, and kind of just making sure that you don't spend 20 30 40 K to start out in your VTuber career, especially as an indie, I would say top it out at 1K if you really want to be on the, on the spendy side. Top it out at 1K to start with, you know, uh, laptops and things like that. You can be 1K if you want to, if you don't have a good laptop and you want to get a new, better one, you start at 1K. Like I started with a 3930K, an old ass CPU when I started, and a GTX 1080 when I started. I started out with that stuff. And I, did, it, I wasn't able to play a lot of intense games, uh, but I made it work. I played mainly Minecraft, Roblox, that type of stuff, stuff that wasn't going to affect my uh, my CPU. I started with a PNG VTuber style because I also my CPU and I didn't have a lot of money. So when I started out, I probably spent with everything I got, I probably spent like two to three hundred bucks to start out. That's why I say to start out a thousand dollars is a good, especially nowadays is a good starting point one to two thousand dollars i would say is a good starting point on the low end you can go up to ten to fifteen twenty thousand dollars like for example freaking shy lily bow and other people have spent twenty to thirty thousand dollars for a video for a animated a fully animated in you know fully professionally animated video for us for for lore and for other things like that you can spend twenty to thirty thousand if you want to go on the high end so i really was very happy to see Pippa do this. I was very happy to see Pippa go through all of the effort to go through this, answer questions, give her advice based on her experience, all that kind of stuff. I loved it and I actually have it saved as something that um, I will be watching later on because no matter how long you've been in the, in the field, there's always new things you can learn. There's always new uh, strategies you can use. Welcome again to another day of VTuber showcases. And today's showcase, this afternoon's showcase is going to be Daimian Kamiya EN VTuber. They are a male VTuber who really what they have is they're an Omni King, just a guy playing games and with hopefully more creative ideas to come like cross stitching, things like that. It's always fun to have people cross stitching is actually if, if it's what I'm thinking, then it is a worthwhile and fun thing to do. Also challenging. I'm just I just I don't have any kind of talent with my hands so it would be challenging for me to do any kind of cross stitching or anything of that sort so let's take a look at their youtube channel which is currently here it's at it's at diamond kamiya channel en vtuber it's all one word it's it's a it's it's a mouthful it's definitely a mouthful we'll take a look at um what they have right here for you
Okay, so I did not get the, um... The, tr the uh, beginning trigger this time. Seventh Dragon 3 Code VFD is the game that they're playing right here. So yeah, just a little bit of... Oh, let's, let's, go about this. let's take a look here. Last time! <laughs> let's go, next Pride! <laughs> Why didn't that trigger last time? So there you are, a nice fun vtuber that can show some excitement and some uh some very interesting times with uh seven dragon three code vfd and many other things they currently as of writing this they are actually streaming i'm watching them of course because i want to support small vtubers as always and let's see uh what else we can come up with here they're doing they're going to be thinking of doing some crafting as well and uh they don't have a stream schedule they don't currently have a stream schedule. They just want to have fun doing the same things they do off stream, but putting it on stream to a audience. And this is the audience that I want to help them grow. They are willing to collaborate if they mesh well. They hope to do hand cam cross stitching stream in combination with watch alongs and things like that. Uh, they want to have the goal of 1K subs. Let's hope we can get them there. And at least one person in every stream just to chat with. Anything beyond that is just a bonus. Also, to do a four-player uh, Borderlands Street series playthrough, that would actually be cool. That would actually be cool to, to be able to, to see them do that. I do thank you as well, uh, Daimian, for being a part of this VTuber showcase. I wish you well, and I hope that this helps you grow, even if it's just a little bit. All for right now, of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys, and I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now, because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.